Social network. A social network is a social structure made up of a set of social actors and a set of the dyadic ties between these actors. The social network perspective provides a set of methods for analyzing the structure of whole social entities as well as a variety of theories explaining the patterns observed in these structures. The study of these structures uses social network analysis to identify local and global patterns, locate influential entities, and examine network dynamics. Social networks and the analysis of them is an inherently interdisciplinary academic field which emerged from social psychology, sociology, statistics, and graph theory. Georg Semmel authored early structural theories in sociology emphasizing the dynamics of triads and web of group affiliations. Jacob Marino is credited with developing the first sociograms in the 1930s to study interpersonal relationships. These approaches were mathematically formalized in the 1950s and theories and methods of social networks became pervasive in the social and behavioral sciences by the 1980s. Social network analysis is now one of the major paradigms in contemporary sociology, and is also employed in a number of other social and formal sciences. Together with other complex networks, it forms part of the nascent field of network science. Overview. The social network is a theoretical construct useful in the social sciences to study relationships between individuals, groups, organizations, or even entire societies, social units, see differentiation. The term is used to describe a social structure determined by such interactions. The ties through which any given social unit connects represent the convergence of the various social contacts of that unit. This theoretical approach is, necessarily, relational. An axiom of the social network approach to understanding social interaction is that social phenomena should be primarily conceived and investigated through the properties of relations between and within units, instead of the properties of these units themselves. Thus, one common criticism of social network theory is that individual agency is often ignored although this may not be the case in practice, see agent-based modeling. Precisely because many different types of relations, singular or in combination, form these network configurations, network analytics are useful to a broad range of research enterprises. In social science, these fields of study include, but are not limited to anthropology, biology, communication studies, economics, geography, information science, organizational studies, social psychology, sociology, and sociolinguistics. History In the late 1800s, both Emil Durkheim and Ferdinand Tonnes foreshadowed the idea of social networks in their theories and research of social groups. Tonys argued that social groups can exist as personal and direct social ties that either link individuals who share values and belief, Gemeinschaft, German, commonly translated as community or impersonal, formal, and instrumental social links, Gesellschaft, German, commonly translated as society. Durkheim gave a non-individualistic explanation of social facts, arguing that social phenomena arise when interacting individuals constitute a reality that can no longer be accounted for in terms of the properties of individual actors. Georg Semmel, writing at the turn of the 20th century, pointed to the nature of networks and the effect of network size on interaction and examined the likelihood of interaction in loosely knit networks rather than groups. Major developments in the field can be seen in the 1930s by several groups in psychology, anthropology and mathematics working independently. In psychology, in the 1930s, Jacob L. Marino began systematic recording and analysis of social interaction in small groups, especially classrooms and work groups, see sociometry. In anthropology, the foundation for social network theory is the theoretical and ethnographic work of Branislaw Malinowski, Alfred Radcliffe Brown, and Claude Levi Strauss. A group of social anthropologists associated with Max Gluckman and the Manchester School, including John A. Barnes, J. Clyde Mitchell and Elizabeth Botspilius, often accredited with performing some of the first fieldwork from which network analyses were performed, investigating community networks in southern Africa, India and the United Kingdom. Concomitantly, 
British anthropologist S. F. Nadal codified a theory of social structure that was influential in later network analysis. In sociology, the early, 1930s, work of Talsot Parsons set the stage for taking a relational approach to understanding social structure. Later, drawing upon Parsons' theory, the work of sociologist Peter Blore provides a strong impetus for analyzing the relational ties of social units with his work on social exchange theory. By the 1970s, a growing number of scholars worked to combine the different tracks and traditions. One group consisted of sociologist Harrison White and his students at the Harvard University Department of Social Relations. Also independently active in the Harvard Social Relations Department at the time were Charles Tilley, who focused on networks in political and community sociology and social movements, and Stanley Milgram, who developed the Six Degrees of Separation thesis. Mark Granovetter and Barry Wellman are among the former students of White who elaborated and championed the analysis of social networks. Levels of analysis In general, social networks are self-organizing, emergent, and complex, such that a globally coherent pattern appears from the local interaction of the elements that make up the system. These patterns become more apparent as network size increases. However, a global network analysis of, for example, all interpersonal relationships in the world is not feasible and is likely to contain so much information as to be uninformative. Practical limitations of computing power, ethics and participant recruitment and payment also limit the scope of a social network analysis. The nuances of a local system may be lost in a large network analysis, Hence the quality of information may be more important than its scale for understanding network properties. Thus, social networks are analyzed at the scale relevant to the researcher's theoretical question. Although levels of analysis are not necessarily mutually exclusive, there are three general levels into which networks may fall, micro-level, meso-level, and macro-level. Micro-level At the micro-level, Social network research typically begins with an individual, snowballing as social relationships are traced, or may begin with a small group of individuals in a particular social context. Dyadic level, a dyad is a social relationship between two individuals. Network research on dyads may concentrate on structure of the relationship, for example multiplexity, strength, social equality, and tendencies toward reciprocity mutuality. Triadic level, add one individual to a dyad, and you have a triad. Research at this level may concentrate on factors such as balance and transitivity, as well as social equality and tendencies toward reciprocity mutuality. Actor level, the smallest unit of analysis in a social network is an individual in their social setting, that is, an actor, or ego. Ego network analysis focuses on network characteristics such as size relationship strength, density, centrality, prestige and roles such as isolates, liaisons, and bridges. Such analyses are most commonly used in the fields of psychology or social psychology, ethnographic kinship analysis or other genealogical studies of relationships between individuals. Subset level, subset levels of network research problems begin at the micro level, but may cross over into the meso level of analysis. Subset level research may focus on distance and reachability, cliques, cohesive subgroups, or other group actions or behavior. Meso level In general, meso level theories begin with a population size that falls between the micro and macro levels. However, meso level may also refer to analyses that are specifically designed to reveal connections between micro and macro levels. Meso-level networks are low-density and may exhibit causal processes distinct from interpersonal micro-level networks. Organizations Formal organizations are social groups that distribute tasks for a collective goal. Network research on organizations may focus on either intra-organizational or inter-organizational ties in terms of formal or informal relationships. Intra-organizational networks themselves often contain multiple levels of analysis, especially in larger organizations with multiple branches, franchises or semi-autonomous departments. In these cases, 
Research is often conducted at a work group level and organization level, focusing on the interplay between the two structures. Randomly distributed networks, exponential random graph models of social networks became state-of-the-art methods of social network analysis in the 1980s. This framework has the capacity to represent social structural effects commonly observed in many human social networks, including general degree-based structural effects commonly observed in many human social networks as well as reciprocity and transitivity, and at the node level, homophily and attribute-based activity and popularity effects, as derived from explicit hypotheses about dependencies among network ties. Parameters are given in terms of the prevalence of small subgraph configurations in the network and can be interpreted as describing the combinations of local social processes from which a given network emerges. These probability models for networks on a given set of actors allow generalization beyond the restrictive dyadic independence assumption of micro-networks, allowing models to be built from theoretical structural foundations of social behavior. Scale-free networks a scale-free network is a network whose degree distribution follows a power law, at least asymptotically. In network theory a scale-free ideal network is a random network with a degree distribution that unravels the size distribution of social groups. Specific characteristics of scale-free networks vary with the theories and analytical tools used to create them, however, in general, scale-free networks have some common characteristics. One notable characteristic in a scale-free network is the relative commonness of vertices with a degree that greatly exceeds the average. The highest degree nodes are often called hubs, and may serve specific purposes in their networks, although this depends greatly on the social context. Another general characteristic of scale-free networks is the clustering coefficient distribution, which decreases as the node degree increases. This distribution also follows a power law. The Barabasi model of network evolution shown above is an example of a scale-free network. Macro level Rather than tracing interpersonal interactions, macro-level analyses generally trace the outcomes of interactions, such as economic or other resource transfer interactions over a large population. Large-scale networks Large-scale network is a term somewhat synonymous with macro-level as used, primarily, in social and behavioral sciences, in economics. Originally, the term was used extensively in the computer sciences, see large-scale network mapping. Complex networks, most larger social networks display features of social complexity, which involve substantial non-trivial features of network topology, with patterns of complex connections between elements that are neither purely regular nor purely random, see, complexity science dynamical system and chaos theory, as do biological, and technological networks. Such complex network features include a heavy tail in the degree distribution, a high clustering coefficient, assortativity or disassortativity among vertices, community structure, and hierarchical structure. In the case of agency-directed networks these features also include reciprocity, triad significance profile, teaspoon, see network motif, and other features. In contrast, many of the mathematical models of networks that have been studied in the past, such as lattices and random graphs, do not show these features. Theoretical links Imported theories Various theoretical frameworks have been imported for the use of social network analysis. The most prominent of these are graph theory, balance theory, social comparison theory, and more recently, the social identity approach. Indigenous theories Few complete theories have been produced from social network analysis. Two that have a structural role theory and heterophily theory. The basis of heterophily theory was the finding in one study that more numerous weak ties can be important in seeking information and innovation as cliques have a tendency to have more homogeneous opinions as well as share many common traits. This homophilic tendency was the reason for the members of the cliques to be attracted together in the first place. However, being similar, each member of the clique would also know more or less what the other members knew. To find new information or insights, 
members of the clique will have to look beyond the clique to its other friends and acquaintances. This is what Granovetta called the strength of weak ties. Structural holes In the context of networks, social capital exists where people have an advantage because of their location in a network. Contacts in a network provide information, opportunities and perspectives that can be beneficial to the central player in the network. Most social structures tend to be characterized by dense clusters of strong connections. Information within these clusters tends to be rather homogeneous and redundant. Non-redundant information is most often obtained through contacts in different clusters. When two separate clusters possess non-redundant information, there is said to be a structural hole between them. Thus, a network that bridges structural holes will provide network benefits that are in some degree additive, rather than overlapping. An ideal network structure has a vine and cluster structure, providing access to many different clusters and structural holes. Information benefits Networks rich in structural holes are a form of social capital in that they offer information benefits. The main player in a network that bridges structural holes is able to access information from diverse sources and clusters. This is beneficial to an individual's career because he is more likely to hear of job openings and opportunities if his network spans a wide range of contacts in different industry sectors. This concept is similar to Mark Granovetta's theory of weak ties, which rests on the basis that having a broad range of contacts is most effective for job attainment. Social capital mobility benefits In many organizations, members tend to focus their activities inside their own groups, which stifles creativity and restricts opportunities. A player whose network bridges structural holes has an advantage in detecting and developing rewarding opportunities. Such a player can mobilize social capital by acting as a broker of information between two clusters that otherwise would not have been in contact, thus providing access to new ideas, opinions and opportunities. British philosopher and political economist John Stuart Mill, writes, It is hardly possible to overrate the value of placing human beings in contact with persons dissimilar to themselves. Such communication one of the primary sources of progress. Thus, a player with a network rich in structural holes can add value to an organization through new ideas and opportunities. This in turn, helps an individual's career development and advancement. A social capital broker also reaps control benefits of being the facilitator of information flow between contacts. In the case of consulting firm Eden McCallum, the founders were able to advance their careers by bridging their connections with former big three consulting firm consultants and mid-size industry firms. By bridging structural holes and mobilizing social capital, players can advance their careers by executing new opportunities between contacts. There has been research that both substantiates and refutes the benefits of information brokerage. A study of high-tech Chinese firms by Zixingxiao found that the control benefits of structural holes are dissonant to the dominant firm-wide spirit of cooperation and the information benefits cannot materialize due to the communal sharing values of such organizations. However, this study only analyzed Chinese firms, which tend to have strong communal sharing values. Information and control benefits of structural holes are still valuable in firms that are not quite as inclusive and cooperative on the firm-wide level. In 2004, Ronald Burt studied 673 managers who ran a supply chain for one of America's largest electronics companies. He found that managers who often discussed issues with other groups were better paid, received more positive job evaluations and were more likely to be promoted. Thus. Bridging structural holes can be beneficial to an organization, and in turn, to an individual's career. Research clusters Communications Communication studies are often considered a part of both the social sciences and the humanities, drawing heavily on fields such as sociology, psychology, anthropology, information science, biology, political science, and economics as well as rhetoric, literary studies, and semiotics. Many communications concepts describe the transfer of information from one source to another, 
and can thus be conceived of in terms of a network. Community In J. A. Barnes Day, a community referred to a specific geographic location and studies of community ties had to do with who talked, associated, traded, and attended church with whom. Today, however, there are extended online communities developed through telecommunications devices and social network services. Such devices and services require extensive and ongoing maintenance and analysis, often using network science methods. Community development studies, today, also make extensive use of such methods. Complex networks Complex networks require methods specific to modeling and interpreting social complexity and complex adaptive systems, including techniques of dynamic network analysis. Criminal networks In criminology and urban sociology, much attention has been paid to the social networks among criminal actors. For example, Andrew Papakristos has studied gang murders as a series of exchanges between gangs. Murders can be seen to diffuse outwards from a single source, because weaker gangs cannot afford to kill members of stronger gangs in retaliation, but must commit other violent acts to maintain their reputation for strength. Diffusion of innovations Diffusion of ideas and innovation studies focus on the spread and use of ideas from one actor to another or one culture and another. This line of research seeks to explain why some become early adopters of ideas and innovations, and links social network structure with facilitating or impeding the spread of an innovation. Demography In demography, the study of social networks has led to new sampling methods for estimating and reaching populations that are hard to enumerate, for example, homeless people or intravenous drug users. For example, Respondent-driven sampling is a network-based sampling technique that relies on respondents to a survey recommending further respondents. Economic sociology The field of sociology focuses almost entirely on networks of outcomes of social interactions. More narrowly, economic sociology considers behavioral interactions of individuals and groups through social capital and social markets. Sociologists such as Mark Granovetter, have developed core cool principles about the interactions of social structure, information, ability to punish or reward, and trust that frequently recur in their analyses of political, economic and other institutions. Granovetter examines how social structures and social networks can affect economic outcomes like hiring, price, productivity and innovation and describes sociologists' contributions to analyzing the impact of social structure and networks on the economy. Health care Analysis of social networks is increasingly incorporated into healthcare analytics, not only in epidemiological studies but also in models of patient communication and education, disease prevention, mental health diagnosis and treatment, and in the study of healthcare organizations and systems. Human Ecology Human ecology is an interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary study of the relationship between humans and their natural, social, and built environments. The scientific philosophy of human ecology has a diffuse history with connections to geography, sociology, psychology, anthropology, zoology, and natural ecology. Language and Linguistics Studies of language and linguistics, particularly evolutionary linguistics, focus on the development of linguistic forms and transfer of changes, sounds or words, from one language system to another through networks of social interaction. Social networks are also important in language shift, as groups of people add and or abandon languages to their repertoire. Literary Networks in the study of literary systems, network analysis has been applied by Anya, Gerards and Romo, De Nook, and Senechal, to study various aspects of how literature functions. The basic premise is that polysystem theory, which has been around since the writings of Evan Zohar, can be integrated with network theory in the relationships between different actors in the literary network, for example writers, critics, publishers, literary histories, 
etc., can be mapped using visualization from SNA. Organizational studies Research studies of formal or informal organizational relationships, organizational communication, economics, economic sociology, and other resource transfers. Social networks have also been used to examine how organizations interact with each other, characterizing the many informal connections that link executives together, as well as associations and connections between individual employees at different organizations. Intra-organizational networks have been found to affect organizational commitment, organizational identification, interpersonal citizenship behavior. Social capital Social capital is a sociological concept which refers to the value of social relations and the role of cooperation and confidence to achieve positive outcomes. The term refers to the value one can get from their social ties. For example, newly arrived immigrants can make use of their social ties to established migrants to acquire jobs they may otherwise have trouble getting, for example, because of unfamiliarity with the local language. Studies show that a positive relationship exists between social capital and the intensity of social network use. Social media Computer networks combined with social networking software produces a new medium for social interaction. A relationship over a computerized social networking service can be characterized by context, direction, and strength. The content of a relation refers to the resource that is exchanged. In a computer-mediated communication context, social pairs exchange different kinds of information, including sending a data file or a computer program as well as providing emotional support or arranging a meeting. With the rise of electronic commerce, information exchanged may also correspond to exchanges of money, goods or services in the real world. Social network analysis methods have become essential to examining these types of computer-mediated communication.